You know, if electricians make a mistake, it's because they like a breaker's not working, or maybe they accidentally picked up a broom. Like that's a big mistake for electricians because they don't <laughs> ever touch brooms, right? Yeah, so they're when, lazy. when plumbers make a mistake, it's usually a wet mess, unfortunately. Yeah, right? it just is. And so um, a couple of years ago, a um, year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, one of my plumbers, and he's still with me today, um, he went to a house and he rebuilt a kitchen faucet and installed a water softener. And uh, so he's turning the water back on to the house. And he never, because he had to turn the water off to do the softener, he never turned the supply stops off to the kitchen faucet. It's just while the water was off, he rebuilt the kitchen faucet. And um, Which this is, is normal. Yeah, this is a very fancy house. It's got hardwood floors, granite countertops, all kinds of stuff. All three floors are finished. First floor, second floor, basement, all finished. And so he rebuilds the faucet, puts in the softener, starts turning the water back on. And you have to start somewhere checking for leaks. And so he starts at the place with the most connections, the water softener, whereas I would have started too. And he's checking for leaks while water service is being restored and all this stuff. Little does he know... He didn't get the cartridge in the kitchen sink faucet seated all the way. And the kitchen sink faucet is flooding the kitchen. And he's down in the basement checking the softener for leaks. And then all of a sudden, he hears water coming through a can light in the basement. And he's like, what's that? And he goes upstairs, and the kitchen sink is, like, royally flooded the kitchen. And it's, like, running all over the countertops, all over the... They, they had, like, a... They didn't have a raised bar. Their counter was just an island, oh. and so it rolled right off the back of the countertop. Yeah, instead of and, going to the sink. Yeah, instead of like, hitting the backsplash the and going to the yeah. sink, it just rolls off the top. Or if it was yeah. just tilted the other way, just a touch. Yeah. Just goes, a quarter bubble. Goes right into a floor register, thankfully. Yeah, it I was going to say, you would ruin that floor. It didn't puddle up on the floor. It went straight into a floor register and flooded the fuck out of the basement. And so we're like, shit, right? That's our first house flood in company history. So we do all the right things. We get the drying companies out there. We have to replace some sheetrock. We have to replace some baseboards, some trim, and all this shit. And I've got a couple of buddies that work in, you know, reconstruction. So they get us all taken care of. Eight days later, they go back to pull their fans and pull their tools because they're done. And they show up to the house, and it's flooded again. Turns out the softener we installed had a broken piece in the control head. And when it went to regenerate eight days later, it flooded the fuck out of the basement. I mean, bad. Right. Worse than the first one. Only this time it didn't come through the ceiling. I don't understand. So so now we have two floods. This is a year and a half ago. We have two floods in our company history and they're both at the same but house. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. This is totally random. Was were those people not living there at the time? No, they were. They just had they just didn't go downstairs. They just ever. didn't go to like it regenerated the night before oh, the construction. Gotcha. Like the water was in their basement for maybe well, it regenerates at two AM and they were over there at eight AM. So the water was in their basement for six hours. And they hadn't gone down to the basement that Did, morning yet. Floor didn't slope if to the you, floor drain. If you, well, it's like tough. every other basement out there. It never slopes to the floor drain. Dude, the lowest is, part in your basement is not the floor drain. Mine, mine is awful. Yeah. Like my whole house, like my basement's perfect. My barn, like you can spray a hose for 40 feet and it all goes to the floor drains. The one in my house, it's awful. Yeah. Like every, it's like bad. literally you could spray a hose for 45 minutes. And there's like an island. Yeah. It, it's the floor it's drain. It's the floor drain. It's yeah. fucking awful. Yeah. So. So that was bad, right? Like, it's one thing to flood a customer's house. It's another thing to flood a customer's house twice in eight days. And so, you know, we had yeah, a lot of... I have of, completely busted your balls for this yep. for at least a year now. We had, we had a lot of year reeling back to Maybe do that, right? Maybe a year right? and a half. Well, did he not... I mean, I'm assuming he incrementally turned the water on at the main... No, or was it, it just, like just a little bit, but it was a lot enough time for it to just start puddling I mean, up? a little bit of water, a lot of bit of water is the same, mm -hmm. right? And and if you're turning it on to check for leaks and you've, you've done a lot of repairs, you have to pick one spot and start. Mm -hmm. And so if something else is leaking... I will say you, the one spot I'd have probably picked would have been like the one that's not in a not, was yeah. in a finished area and not an unfinished or, area. Or the flip side. And, and again, hindsight's a bitch in this, right? Like yeah, it's it easy is. to look at this back and say like, I would have done it different. Like the flip side is you rebuild the kitchen faucet and then you turn the stops off so that you can test the softener and then come up and turn the stops onto the kitchen and test it on its own. I will say to that, I if I don't have to turn stops off, I don't turn them off. No, right. I because they, they break down, yeah. and those little rubbers go everywhere, then they ruin all the work you just yep. did in the kitchen faucet. 100%. For those of you that don't think I know something about plumbing, get mm -hmm. bent. It's awful. Yeah. It, and it's the hot stop every time. It's freaking ridiculous. And, and this is one of those things where, like, like shit I wouldn't happens. have shut them off. I would have I kept them on. Yeah. So like we, if, we made it a company policy from that day forward that if you're ever installing a softener, you have to 
stay on site until it's completed. It's you have to force it into a regeneration. Yeah, force. And you have to stay on site until it's done. Yeah, it's like a force and defrost. The softener that we install, you can fast skip it through the regeneration as yeah. long as it's been. Mm-hmm. It goes through I think eight steps in the regen, and as long as it's, it's been in a step for sixty seconds, you can hit skip. Fast forward. And it'll skip to the next one. Yeah. So you can you can so, put so each you can step. Test it. Yeah. yeah, you can so test, you can it, test right. it. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know, six, seven, eight months later, that same plumber is in a customer's house five or six blocks this from me. This is the same dude, too? Same dude. <laughs> he's I did he's not in a house up on that, five on or the, six blocks from me. Call. <laughs> and um, I had recently gotten the guy's pro press machines is prior it the to house, this. Is it the house on the corner? No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so he puts in a main entrance valve in this customer's house and he's fairly new to using ProPress, and he forgets to ProPress one of the connections. And the water pressure in this house is fairly low, and so it didn't leak right away. It didn't leak until about eight hours later when they were everything was sitting idle and the water heater heated and thermal expansion built a little bit of pressure. Yeah, And then it blew it. that son of a gun apart and flooded the hell out of the basement, right? And so the customers call us and they can't get the main, like it, it was leaking. The, the ProPress connection he forgot the crimp was on the bottom side of the main entrance valve. Yeah. So, so turning the just, valve off doesn't do yeah. anything. They had to go to the meter. Well, then they couldn't get the meter all the way off because it was stiff. And so. And they're, and they're homeowners. Yeah. And so, you know, it's only a couple of blocks from my house. I go over there. I get them all squared away. I apologize profusely. And that's we, a, that's. Like when you talk about eating humble pie, that's uh, a those are tough conversations. I mean, it sucks, right? You have to lo- literally look them in the eye and say, "I am so sorry that yeah. I am a complete fucking jack off." Even if it's not your fault. Like well, that's basically what you're saying. Yeah. And it's just like nothing makes you feel smaller yeah. than that. Like you're just like, "Oh." And so like we I mean, anytime we it's make so mistakes, bad, we take great care of our people when we make mistakes. So um bad. You know, we we completely restored that first guy's house that we flooded twice. Thankfully, the second <laughs> flood was just drying. It wasn't anything else. Um, so it's not funny, but it's funny because I mean, it's it not is funny. me. It's it not is me. funny, right? So this this third I'm sorry, buddy. this third incident, like uh, it was bad. Uh, their carpet was so old and so crappy, we couldn't dry it out. So I had to buy them all new carpet. I had to buy them all new uh, luxury vinyl plank flooring in the basement. All new baseboards. All new cord around. Um, you know, fair amount, right? Yeah. And I'm coming out of pocket on this because I don't want to turn it into my insurance and jack it? my rates. Fifteen? Uh, I think 10? about three grand. Oh, that's it? Total. Yeah. Oh, I feel way one, less bad one, for you. Well, it's con- <laughs> concrete floors in a basement. Yeah, right? but baseboard, paying a trim guy. Yeah, I know. You, you know, I mean, yep. that can Flooring, get expensive. Yeah, quite a bit. So, three um, grand's cheap. You got lucky. Somehow, through the grace of God, we gained that customer's trust back. And they called us back like a month and a half ago and had us rebuild a kitchen faucet. And we go to rebuild it and this thing won't rebuild. It's all full of scale. It's all full of junk. And so they were asking like, what can you do about this? And well, they make water conditioners and water softeners. And you know, if you want one, we can get you pricing on that. And like, we don't really push water softeners hard, but if the customer, if the customer thinks they have hard water, they have hard water. Right. Yeah. Like I'm not going to convince you, you have hard water. If you don't think you have hard water, I'm pissing up a rope trying to convince you of it. Yeah. But if you're like, I don't like the way my water feels, well, we can fix it, right? And so we're a very soft approach on the hard water thing. Yeah. Our water around here is pretty good. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, decent. It, it averages like seven to nine grains of hardness. It's not, it's not crazy. Yeah. And so they wanted a Halo 5 water conditioner. They wanted a saltless water softener. And so, and they also needed a uh, new water heater. And so throughout this whole process, and they were- a new kitchen faucet, apparently? Well, we put in a new kitchen faucet a month and a half oh, okay. ago, right? But okay. during that visit, we started talking oh, okay. water softeners, gotcha, water gotcha, conditioners. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, following. And, and then they were interested in tankless water heaters, and we talked about tankless and tank type, and, um, and we, we warned them ahead of time, like, if you go tankless, we have to cut these shelves out of the way because it has to mount on this wall. If you go tank type, it just gets replaced right here. Well, some error in communication happened and they wanted tank type, but they cut these shelves out of the way ahead of time. And so they were already a little frustrated when we showed up to do the install because they cut these shelves out of the way and they didn't need to be cut out. So now they lost their shelves. Okay, 
Right. That's that's on the homeowner. And don't be a dipshit. I mean, some of it's on like, the homeowner. Maybe it's dude, the way we talk. Like you just don't know. Use your common sense. Yeah. If this if this is going to remove and a new one's going to go in, why would this thing over here on the left have to go? Yeah, that's on know. them. I don't know. I'll give you that one. Could be. Right. They're idiots. You just got I, it. I wasn't a part of the conversation, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> So he, oh, again, because his guys are listening, we're, that's on the homeowner. We're doing a saltless, up, guys. <laughs> we're doing a saltless water softener here, and so the guys, the install team, stays on site through the regeneration process. They kick it into a regen, and they stay on site, and they take the opportunity to go out to the truck and uh, smoke a cigarette and drink some water and, and whatever else. And so the guy who sold the job, our, our plumber, these are our installers doing the job. Our plumber shows up. They all, our plumbers will typically circle around. Uh, on those jobs on their last visit of the day to make sure that all the promises they made to the customer were fulfilled, tidy up any messes, address any concerns, and then collect, right? Yeah, talk to the customer, make sure they're happy. Yep. And so our plumber shows up and sees the guy sitting in the were, truck. Were the homeowners there? Yes. Okay. And sees the guy sitting in the truck and he's like, what are you guys doing? And they they're like, hear, oh, we're they, done. They don't hear water running. No, they're, they're <laughs> like, we're done. It's just, you know, it's regenerating right now and we're just, you know, getting through that and then we're going to be out of here. And the guy's like, cool. So my guy walks into the basement and finds it raining in the basement. <laughs> um, the, they did not properly install the discharge line of the drain line on the softener. What's a proper, what do you mean by? Well, when a water properly? softener, when a water softener discharges, it uses, it discharges at line pressure. And so if you have 80 pounds of pressure and it discharges through like a half inch or a three eighths inch flexible drain tube. And yeah. so if you have 80 pounds of pressure, imagine 80 pounds of pressure spraying out of a three eighths flexible line, that thing's going to move around like a fire hose, right? So you have to firmly anchor it. Do and you guys not put them in the four drains, like in the hole? And move them in the hole?